Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. As with everyone, proper riding has been compromised at this time, so I thought I would take this opportunity to discuss an interesting upgrade to my bike. I ride a Calibre Bosnut V2, which is a phenomenal bike for the price. However, it runs a 2x drivetrain up front, and I spent a lot of my time in the beginning getting my fingers covered in chain oil as it would drop on bumpy sections of trail. For that reason, I recently decided to upgrade to a 1x setup. As I looked for chain rings, I first came across the oval chain ring. As someone who enjoys physics and engineering, these oddly shaped chain rings quickly became of interest. After some time looking, I bought a Gorilla Brakes 34 tooth oval chain ring, the one shown here on the video. To understand how an oval chain ring works, we first have to know how a normal drivetrain works. Towards the front of your bike, you have a chain ring driven by cranks on either side. At the axle, you have your cassette and your rear derailleur. How easy the gear is depends on the gear ratio between the chain ring and the selected ring on the cassette. For example, if you ran a 34 tooth chainring up front and had selected an 11 tooth chainring on the cassette, the gear ratio would be 34 to 11. If we divide these numbers, we get roughly 3.1. This means that for every full rotation of the chainring, the rear wheel rotates 3.1 times. The rear wheel therefore rotates three times faster than the chainring roughly. But in order for energy to be conserved, three times more force must be applied than its output at the wheel. Let's compare this to a situation where you had picked a 36 tooth ring on the cassette. This would give a gear ratio of 34 to 36. In this case, a full rotation of the chain ring causes the wheel to rotate only 0.94 times. Therefore, the rear wheel rotates 1.06 times slower than the chain ring. But using energy conservation, we also know that the chainring can be driven with 1.06 times less force than its output at the wheel. It is this reduced input force that makes lower gears useful for climbing up steep hills, where you are doing work against gravity. In summary, to travel at a constant speed, an easier gear would require less force but faster pedalling, and a harder gear would require more force but slower pedalling. We can use this principle to show how an oval chainring works. Due to its shape, the diameter and therefore also the gear ratio of the chainring changes as it rotates. The chainring is set up in a very specific position. For the sake of this comparison, let's assume the force of your foot on the pedals is vertically down. When your cranks are level, the perpendicular distance of the force from the spindle is the greatest so the moment of the force is the biggest. Also, at this point, the chain ring is oriented such that the diameter of the part in contact with the chain is the greatest. The chain ring effectively acts as a 36 tooth round chain ring, increasing the gear ratio. Ultimately, what this does is it increases the velocity of the wheel, whilst the extra input force required is compensated for by the extra leverage. At the point where your cranks are near vertical, the perpendicular distance of the force from the pivot is smaller, thus causing a smaller moment. Here, the chain ring is oriented, so the diameter of the part in contact with the chain is the smallest. The chain ring now acts as a 32 tooth round ringwood, reducing the gear ratio. This means that the input force is reduced at the point at which you have the least leverage. These two things combined mean that pedaling efficiency can be improved. By increasing the output when you have the most leverage, and decreasing output at the dead spots of the rotation, pedaling is made easier and smoother, particularly on steeper climbs. My chainring is what is known as a narrow wide chainring. Each tooth on the ring alternates between a thicker tooth and a thinner tooth. If we look at the chain of my bike from above, we can see why this is. The links that connect on the outside form a much wider slot than the links on the inside. These are then filled by their corresponding size teeth on the chain ring, with the overall effect of reducing movement of the chain and reducing the chance of it dropping. I can say this system proves to be very effective, 
as I haven't dropped a chain yet since switching to this new chain ring. To find out how I have found my chain ring and whether the oval shape has made a difference, stay tuned for an in-depth review. But for now, I hope you found this video exciting and interesting and let me know if you use an oval chain ring in the comments. See you next time and keep surfing that dirt.